Assalamualaikum and hope you all in the being help. My name is Mama Amir Hakim Ben Musa from Group 7. The region that we choose is Northern Africa and Southwestern Asia. As you can see here, it's a world map part of the region. The Middle East is a region which includes most of the Western Asia and Africa north of Sahara. Middle East also is an ethnocentric which describes lands by their location relative to Europe. The boundaries of Northern Africa and Southwestern Asia are primarily coastline with a line drawn in the south, in the south through the Sahara along the country boundaries. Mountain range mark the northern and eastern limit of Turkey and Iran include Sudan. Northern Africa and Southwestern Asia is one of the most influential and politically consensual world region. Now, we are moving on to the climate of this region. There are three types. There are three types of climate for this region, which is dry arid, semi arid, and continental arid. In a dry arid, the, tem the temperature can be as high as 58 Celsius and as low as 1 Celsius. There are also lack of cloud cover, which make the night, which will make the night cool, and it also rain irregularly at the dry arid climate. As of this, as of as because of this, not many population live in this area. If there are population living in the area, most of them live in a nomad way. Next is a semi-arid climate, which is the second most dry climate. Semi-arid climate is a dry, grassy plain often occur in this climate, which means it's lie between the tropic and polar region. The mean annual temperature for this climate is 18 Celsius or 0 Celsius in the coldest month. The region of land cover this climate small part, northern part of the northern Africa region. Okay, as for the last climate is the continental climate. Okay, continental climate, for this climate, the temperature is very cold in the winter, hot in the summer, and little rain in the fall. Little rain in the fall. The average temperature is between 0 Celsius to 10 Celsius. The example, uh, the example region of land that have continental climate is Turkey and Iran. For fun fact, winter snowfall provide melt water that feed the Trigris Eupateris river system. Now we'll be moving on to the environmental problem, which is salinization, oil pollution, and desertification. Salinization is known as a process. Irrigation farming in arid area requires good management to prevent high rate of evaporation from drawing salt to the surface soil, which reduce or destroy crop productivity, which means adding too much water, waterlock the soil and concentrate salt at the surface. Next is an oil pollution problem. The oil industry has become a major polluter throughout over the world and this region can escape from that too. As example, the Prussian Gulf has had lost most, most of its plants and animal life as a result of oil pollution. Lastly, for environmental problem is desertification. Desertification means the conversion of non-desert land into desert. It is one of the major environmental issues in North Africa and Southwest Asia. It is, it, is, it is because climate change is the result of desertification. Why? As temperature increase due to glo global warming, as a result, uh, the climate change and the plant die, which then cause uh, no tree and vegetated land to a form of land to a form. For the next point, I will give to Mr. Amir Arif to explain. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Amir Arif Azman and now I will explain about the culture and history or history and culture of the Northern Africa region and the Southwestern Asian region. Northern Africa, there's uh, one of the earliest civilization in the world that is the uh, is in the Egypt, the Old Kingdom of Egypt. Uh, before in the long time before this. And there has uh, Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt There after the merge came uh, Old Kingdom of Egypt And then came to the New Kingdom of Egypt And during this time there are several uh, dynasties that have been regioned as the pharaohs 
and some of the popular pharaohs like Tutankhanum, Joser, Serzes, even the Ramses the second uh, and other popular pharaohs have been regent through this era after the era ended by the Macedonian Empire led by Alexander the Great then the Egypt is reach, uh, is a region by Pet uh, Ptolemy the first and the Ptolemy dynasty started then until the region of the Cleopatra the seven and after the Cleopatra seven's death and the Egypt is fall under the Roman Empire as we know that the Roman Empire is one of the greatest uh, empire in the history of the humankind and several popular leaders like uh, Augustus, uh, Trajan, and Marcus Aurelius, and others, emperor, the popular emperors, even the uh, like uh, late uh, era of the Roman Empire, such as Constantine the Great. And after several years, after the even the another, I say that the third century crisis and others, and uh, the Roman Empire started to break part into the two and the western and eastern empire and the western fall and leaving the eastern uh, sole roman kingdom and the and now popularly known as the byzantine empire and they uh, continue to exist until the fall of constantinople uh, by the Osm by the Osm osman empire uh, led by mehmed ii okay i will go jump a bit to the southwestern Asia that at the time uh, is really dominated by the uh, Persian Empire like uh, Archimedean, the Parthians and others so then we see that in the 1600s the rise of Islam, the rise of Muslim Kingdom uh, under the leadership of first our beloved Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, and then continue with the Rashidu Caliphate uh, Umayyad Caliphate spreaded the Islamic Kingdom until the Spain and even Abbasid Caliphate and in the Egypt back we have uh, Ayyubid uh, Caliphate and uh, popular during the Crusade era and then we have the Mamluk Sultanate in the Egypt and then we have Ottoman Empire even though the Ottoman region is uh, in the Turkey and still considered a great uh, Muslim Empire the, at, time, at this time we really like a golden age of the Muslim country the Islam because the so many several uh, kingdom rise up with this time and then we go to the modern part then the southwestern Asia even the Egypt Algeria even Libya the Morocco uh, been uh, at, at some point held by the Ottoman Empire and then <coughs> After the Ottoman Empire fell in after the World War One and there's several countries and then even the, after World War Two and uh, we have this current country that we have like uh, Morocco, Algeria, Libya, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Oman, Kuwait, Qatar, and Lebanon and Jordan, Syria and even the Palestine is the example of country that we have now this and uh, this is the like a brief history of the region now we go to the religion and if we see that the region northern africa and uh, southwestern asia we we automatically we see the oh the region is what islam christian and the jews or the judaism okay <clears throat> uh, i will explain a little bit about this region religion in in general as we know that judaism is a religion that uh worshiping the yahweh the their god creator and the law giver and as we know that the uh, judaism is a religion that be established in palestine about uh, 2000 bc and judaism really related with the uh, abraham uh, with the uh, Moses, uh, we know the Moses, and also, and with the if Cairo uh, and Judaism really related with the Israel, and we surrounding the Israel and Palestine conflicts, and in the Judaism, so we 
There's story if you guys know about the uh, Trev tribe of Israel the son of the prophet Jacob uh, and then uh, another information that uh, in the 70 AD that the Roman Empire army destroyed the Jerusalem and dispersed Jews as we know that before that uh, Jerusalem is a really hot spot and popular spot with the three religion in the region that is the Islam, the Judaism and the Christianity okay next we go to the Christianity and I will keep uh, simple as I can and for Christianity uh, they really evolve if, if we see or we say or we think about Christianity we always think about the Jesus Christ or Jesus and life of Jesus, death of Jesus and the Christian also believe that the Jesus is their Messiah and I want to add it that the Christian religion is one become once became the main religion of the Roman Empire under the region of Empire Constantine during the 300s AD and then after the era of the Roman Empire and so on they have a split between the Eastern and the Western Christianity where, where the Eastern have a Orthodox and the Western have a Catholics that even the Western then in the uh, medieval era, the reformation era, they also split out they have currently have, we have a, a like what a protestant, angelical, lutherism and so on now we go to the the most familiar and the most in our heart that is the islam religion uh, as we, as we know islam is involved in the mecca in the 600s under our under leadership of our beloved prophet that is prophet muhammad and the Islam religion also uh, worship one God is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even after the death of Prophet Muhammad his teaching and his fighting continue with the Rashidun Caliphate, the Umayyad Caliphate, the Abbasid Caliphate even the Ayubi Caliphate, even the Osman Empire uh, the Islam continue to grow even after the death of Prophet Muhammad Okay, at this time, I would say that is like golden age of the Muslim that we expansion with the science, the calligraphy, the arts, even the military expansion. As we know that uh, Rashidun Caliphate, Ayu Mayat, Abbasi also has so many war and so many military expansion that in the end they got the Persian, they got. Egypt, they got the even the Andalusia and so on. Okay, I uh, I want to add that even Islam also have their own split in the region that is the Sunni and Shia. Uh, uh, as we know that currently the we are the Sunnis and the Shia uh, usually the one who follow the Prof, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Caliph Ali and family, and is not is really uh, doesn't really acceptable in our life and our religion because what our, what we believe is the Sunnis with the Al Quran and the Sunnis. Uh, oh, sorry, the Sunnah. Now we go to the organization within the region. That the first I will uh, explain about the Palestine Liberalization Organization or the PLO okay the PLO is founded in the 1964 during the Cairo summit in the Egypt and it's a political organization providing an umbrella for many small groups and organization that demand the country of Palestine or the country for the Palestine and it's also the one of member of the Arabs League and they also has recognized and considered by the United States and Israel as a terrorist group organization until, until the Madrid conference in 1991 and in 1993 the PLO recognized unfortunately the Israel right to exist in the region and they reject the violence and terrorism and they also officially recognize and even the Israel uh, officially recognize the PLO as a representative representative of the Palestinians Palestinians Palestinians
Palestinian's people. And even the 1974, uh, it recognized the sole legitimate representative of the Palestinian people with the over 100 states, uh, which is uh, heavy engaged with the diplomatic missions and relations. As we know, the Arab League is created after the World War in 1945 and is used Arabs, Arabic as the official language and is established in order to against the Israel united the Arab country and to against the establishment of the nation of Israel and first they have several founding members as the only independent country at the time but the member is continue to grow and currently have a 22 countries as the members and even after 1979 Egypt Accord with Israel as we know that the Camp David Accord between the Israel and the uh, Egypt and and then they expel Egypt from the league and then between 1958 to 1961 Egypt and Syria has joined as the United Arab Republic to persuade the Arabic country to unite it and commit their future in a single Arabic country. And if, but however, the Arab League is kind of weaker nowadays. Even the 80s, 90s, they kind of weak due to continue military tension, defeats, uh, disunity between the country, and or even the continual crisis with the Israel and Palestine crisis, and even the the resources issue basis among the country and uh, that forced this league organization kind of weak right now this is uh, like uh, the list of the members of the Arab League stated in 2018 we see that certain countries like Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Kuwait, Lebanon, uh, Algeria, Bahrain is part of this Arab League OIC or the full name is Organization Islamic Conference, or I'm sorry, the Organization of the Islamic Conference (OOIC), and the OIC is established in 1970s, set up by the Foreign Minister of the Muslim World, and OIC is re relatively as the representative of the Muslim voice, uh, as the voice of the Muslim country, and the priority of this organization is to bring back the. Uh, Palace, uh, Jerusalem under the Palestinian control and the official language of this organization is uh, Arabic, English and somehow French and the conference is held every three years and even though the organ and department of the uh, conference or, or organization is meeting frequently and even the conference is seeking to promote the cooperation amongst members in terms of the economic, scientific, culture and even the political issues. This is the, the 2019 list member of the OIC and we see that Malaysia also part of this uh, conference. We have Indonesia, we have the even the Bangladesh and other country. Last one we go to the OPEC or the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Country and if by name we all you know about the petroleum and the OPEC is founded in 1960 uh, during the meet between the Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, Kuwait, Venezuela and Baghdad and I was I was we know that the this country is popular with the petroleum and the oil as an oil country and the purpose of this organization is to work as a cartel mostly in the oil and the country also joined by the Qatar, Indonesia, Libya, UAE, Algeria, Ecuador, Gabon and even the Angola and even in 2011 OPEC have 12 members and currently OPEC have 13 members of the organization and the OPEC as in I will say that once they had an oil embargo uh, in 1973 as if we read there is oil crisis uh, in order to counter the Arab-Israel conflict or Arab-Israel war in 1973 and uh, the control and the embargo is really affected the world until they call it the crisis, oil crisis in 1973 and even the late 1990s the OPEC oil producer and major industrial countries have 
a stable price on the oil price and the interest lay in the moderately high okay this is the i think the latest one of the opec member it was the 20 2020 that obviously the kuwait libya and saudi arabia and even uae is part of this organization okay now we go to i would say like uh, some kind of issue within the region there is water politics and i will for me that is quite unsurprisingly water because for me that there is this is this kind of region really some kind of problem with the water and the uh, issue that i want to describe today is the desalinization plan the nine river agreement the turkish dam and the pa uh, palestine israel uh, water issue to desalinization okay for so for all of you don't know what is desalinization is desalinization is uh, some kind of process that you take salt out of water or of sea water and make it more drinkable for people and for irrigation for agriculture and really invest heavily in the desalinization plants and Saudi Arabia and UAE account for 30% of world's capacity and contain uh, the 10th most largest desalinization plants and Saudi Arabia also have received 70% of its fresh water from desalinization plants and it's really consumed of the region's oil supplies and it also planning nuclear power plants to supply the, the energy needed for desalinization and desalinization capacity is really increasing 10% uh, by every year Okay, now we go to Nile River Valley Agreement In 1959, the government of Egypt and Sudan reach and share an agreement named uh, now water agreement and in, and in 1970 there a uh, bill aswan dam near the lake nasir the dam fit by the nile river and the reservoir formed near the lake nasir and the, the objective is for water storage and general electricity and they calculate that the this dam should able to store water for 15 years However, they proved wrong. In 1988, they proved it wrong because they only are able to store last 18 years, 1970 to 1988, and they are forced to discharge water and reduce to maintain the flow through the river. Okay, now we go to the, the series of the dam construction by the Turkish government. And the Turkish government uh, built a dam near the southeastern Turkey and the upper reached the Tigris and the Euphrates River and uh, they built a dam you know in order to irrigate, irrigate the land and to increase the production of the agriculture but in the end it just caused tension between the two countries Iraq and the Syria because the dam uh, caused the water diverts from the two country now we go to the israel and israel palestine water crisis and even though the israel received the rainfall or water rain the total rainfall is low and the summer brought the water shortage for the country and even the, the country is depend external sources of 20 percent is the water and the backrish used to farming but can damage soils if too much used for many seasons and the government retains the authority with near the west bank and golden height for for the, their for their defense and the and the water access and even now they have a peace negoci negotiation with the jo kingdom of jordan includes agreement to use the jordan river water basin back to me now we have come to the south region of this of Northern Africa and Southeastern Asia. In this region, they are divided to three sub regions, which is Northern Africa, Arab Southwest Asia, and now River Valley. For Northern Africa, as you can see here, is the map of the sub region. There are four countries that are listed in Northern Africa, which is Libya, Morocco. Algeria and Tunisia 
in this northern Africa region, there are three major economic activity, which the first one is services. What I mean by services is like a tourism industry, where the name of the company is Moroccan National Tourist. As a fact, this company is the biggest tourist company in Morocco that has so much to offer for their customer. Furthermore, we go to the next economic activity, which are the mining activity or mining industry, which are mostly done in Tunisia. There are one company that has been longest in this business, which is longest in the business, which is Societe du Dejabel de Risa, which the first headquarter can be seen in this slide. The company is founded in 1899 and began its operation in 1907. The company has produced up to 700,000 tons per year of hemat ore in the year before World War II. But the production has come, but the production has dropped after the war end. The last economic activity in this subregion is agriculture industry or known as, or known as harvesting activities. Where the company that lead there is named Al Hidayah. The economic activity is take taken place in southern Tunisia. Why Tunisia, you say? It is because this region is well known for its microclimate, allowing early harvests for its, and for its underground water resources. And today we will discuss regarding the Nile River region. And the Nile River region, that consists two countries, that is Egypt and Sudan. Okay, now we go to the three economic activities that occur in the Nile River. That first is cotton activities that fall under the ag agriculture industry and located mainly in the Alexandria, Egypt, and is managed by the Abu Madawi Company. Next, that is a uh, service activity that fall under obviously the tourism and usually occur in the Great Pyramid of Giza in the Egypt and usually managed by the Aswan Private Tours. Okay, now we go to the transport service that obviously is under transportation industry and uh, usually in at the Nile River and it well, it managed by the Egypt National Railways. We're moving on to the last sub-region which is Arab Southwest Asia. Beside me, you can see the Arab Southwest map. There are many countries listed in Arab Southwest Asia which is Bahrain, Iraq, Jordan, Kuwait, Lebanese, Oman, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Yemen, UAE, and Syria. It's all together is 11 countries. As there are so many countries, I will specific the economic activity to the most oil producing country and to the two non or little oil producing countries. The first, the list of oil producing countries are Bahrain, Iraq, United, um, United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, Qatar, Oman, and Saudi Arabia. The first economic activity in all producing countries are airline services, or known as aviation industry. I think we all know that the world, the world largest airline operator in the Middle East are Emirates Airline, right? Which the airline service is founded in Dubai. Moving on to the next community in all producing countries are services. For example, the service that I mean is resort industry, which takes place in Egypt. And the company that lead this are Shram El Sheikh. For your information, this company is the biggest company that co contributing to the evolution of Egyptian tourism. Last but not least, the economic activity for oper all producing countries are mining or known as petroleum industry. As we know, if talk about petroleum, the industry, then it must be located at Saudi Arabia. The lead company in this industry named Saudi Aramco, which is known to operate the world's largest single hydrocarbon network, the master gas system. As we have the non or little oil produced countries such as Lebanon, Yemen, Syria and Jordan. The service activity fall under the tourism activity, tourism industry and occur in the Sokta Yemen and usually have by the Jubari travel. Next we go to the farming activity that fall under the agriculture industry and usually held at the Zalqa Lebanon and 
managed by the Inma Agriculture SARL. Okay, the last one is the clothing activity that fall under the manufacturing industry that held at the Zarko Jordan and managed by Noble Appears Jordan.